Hey, friend. Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I want to dig into the massive versatility of the Logic Mixer. While I'm sure that we're all very familiar with the mixer, I feel like there's a couple of details that fly under the radar that are just so helpful. Now, this video is going to include a couple of links to other videos because I'm just going to quickly just go over some of these details, not in a very deep dive sort of way. So if you're looking for more information, a clearer sense of what I'm going to demonstrate to you, just click on those links and it'll bring you right to those videos for a much more thorough analysis. Now, if we open the mixer, I'm sure we're all very familiar with what a mixer is. It allows us to open plugins for processing our tracks, adjust faders and panning, be able to route audio to separate auxiliary channel strips for parallel processing, such as parallel compression or adding reverb or delay. And if your audio interface allows for it, you can even route audio from the mixer in Logic to separate specific outputs on your audio interface. And so there's a lot of versatility. But first things first, I want to point out again that the mixer is as customizable as you need it to be. We've already examined introducing the EQ thumbnail, the gain reduction meter, and these are great because we can open an EQ or compressor for the first time or an already existing compressor EQ on our channel strip, and we even get a bird's eye view of what kind of processing we've started to use on our tracks. But if we right-click anywhere in the inspector or the mixer here and go to channel strip components, we have a whole lot of options to introduce to the mixer and channel strips. We can bring in audio device controls. We can introduce or remove the MIDI effects, the input section, the audio effects, the sends, or you can even introduce things like track notes or control surface bars. It's really up to you how much you want to include in the mixer or remove because it's something you don't really use every day. For example, I don't really use track notes, so I just disable it. But of course, if you're someone who likes to use the track notes, and if we open the track notes here, we can add, let's say to this drum kit designer, we'll add to the track, hello. And then we can introduce the track notes, boom, hello. So you can have key information right at the bottom of the channel strip. Number two, I wanna to bring to your attention is the fact that you can change the orientation of a track from mono to stereo or back. This would be for audio tracks or auxiliary channel strips or any type of channel strip that includes this Venn diagram or single circle right next to the input section. We can see here that our reverb is a stereo reverb, but we can change it from stereo to mono with a single click. Now we can see that the two circles have changed to one, which implies mono, but our meters here still are showing us a stereo track. So if we go to our reverb and switch from dual mono to mono, we can see that the meter has changed to mono. And now when we change this orientation, it switches back to stereo, back to mono. And so this is a very quick and easy way to decide, do you want a stereo track or a mono track so you can fine tune the routing in your project? And if you click and hold these different options, you actually can choose between mono, stereo, the left side of the signal, the right side only, or surround orientation. Additionally, we can actually change the orientation of a plugin regardless of the style of channel strip we're working with. For example, we're working with a stereo reverb here, but if I click here, you can see we can choose between stereo or dual mono, and we'll dig into dual mono. But if I hold option and click, we can now change the chroma verb instance to mono. And even though this is a stereo track, we can have a stereo track kind of like convert to mono halfway down the chain or wherever you need it to. This often works in the opposite direction where maybe you're working with a mono track and you add a reverb at the end of the chain and you prefer the track to be switched to stereo so you get that stereo feel of a reverb. Let me just demonstrate with, let's say the synth here. And I'm just gonna option click and introduce a game plugin in mono. So we now have a mono synth. And I'm gonna option click again and go for chroma verb in stereo. So now we've gone from stereo to mono back to stereo and check it out. which is super helpful for certain applications. Number three in our list of how versatile the Logic Mixer is, is that we have dual mono orientation. Now dual mono might feel kind of intimidating. That's why I have a whole video dedicated to dual mono, but basically you can process different parts of a stereo signal completely separate from one another. So let's go back to the synth. I'm gonna remove these plugins and I'm gonna open the channel EQ in dual mono. And we can see here that we have a left signal and a right signal. 
And if we click on this gear, we can change the orientation from stereo to mid side. So I won't dig into that right now. I have a whole video and I'll link it, but let's quickly hear the differences that we can impart on the left side separate from the right. which creates an interesting stereo effect. And so Logic has mono track stereo, left only, right only, dual mono for separate processing, and even surround. Next, I really wanna demonstrate the value of the stereo pan knob. Now with stereo tracks, they look just about the same as a mono track in terms of panning, but if we right click, we can choose between different orientations for even the pan knob. Stereo pan, balance, or binaural pan. Now balance is the default for stereo tracks and allows us to choose how much of the left signal or the right signal we want. It's not panning, it's balancing. We're effectively muting the left side when we balance all the way to the right and muting the right side when we balance to the left. But if I switch this from the balance knob to stereo pan, In this case, we're actually panning the entire signal to the left or to the center. And we can even change the width of the stereo track as well. So we can widen it up or make it completely mono. Just hovering your mouse so you see the white handles highlighted. So we just covered four different ways that the Logic Mixer is incredibly versatile. And the last I wanna give you is sends on faders, because this is pretty interesting about the Logic Mixer. Now, if we work with a send, we have this dial and we have the send field, and I'll set the orientation to post pan, and we can adjust the level with this dial going into the reverb. And for some, you might want a little more fine-tuned action when it comes to adjusting your send levels. So if we go up here to sends on faders, we can actually turn this on for specific sends. If we select another send, large hall, we now have two different options to choose from. Instead of just using the dial here to fine tune the send level, we can actually use the fader. If you don't see the section sends on faders in the mixer, just right click on the send knob and you have sends on faders to select. We can also adjust the panning independent from the original signal. So if we turn off sends on faders, and I'm gonna send this all the way to the left, turn this back on, right click, and I'm going to introduce independent pan, and I'm going to set the independent pan to the other side. Check it out. I've actually panned this synth completely to the left, but in regards to the reverb, I'm sending the send completely to the right. And again, I have a video all about this, so we're not gonna dive too deep into this. And I'll link that video in this video. But one other thing that I wanna bring to your attention is that we can actually create headphone mixes thanks to sends on faders and copy faders to sends. And I just wanna demonstrate that we can actually send our audio to a separate output on our audio interface. Now, right now I'm using a piece of software called ScreenFlow, so I can't pick my headphone output. So we're just gonna pretend that bus 13 is actually an output but if we take a look, if we go to mix, and for my audio interface, open Apogee Control, you can actually see here that for my different headphone outputs, I can actually specify different playback systems. So for me, it would say playback one, two, three, four, five, six, and those would be accessible right from the output section in the mixer here. But if I set all of these tracks to, let's say bus three, or let's say bus 11, and this is an output to my headphones, I can then right click the send field and select copy faders to sends. And now I have a specific headphone mix for my performer or myself if I'm the one recording. And these are identical to the faders right here. So if I turn on sends on faders and we select bus 11, it's identical. And then you can adjust and fine tune further for your performer. So if you want a little less of the synth or a little more, it's really fantastic. Again, I'll link to that video, but these are five, six different ways that you can route and fine tune different signals in your mixer. 
You can customize your mixer's channel strips. You can convert plugins and tracks from mono to stereo, stereo to mono. We have different panning options for stereo tracks. We can use dual mono processing to process either the left signal separate from the right. And we have different sends on fader options, independent pan, where you can even copy fader levels to the sends for an easy once and done type of thing for like headphone mixes or anything else. I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow in the series.